on. So, um, you then go back to America. How and by this you point, you're rich as fuck. So basically. you're, you're yeah, anyone I've got in. a situation as well. All right then. Which one of those? Because the first time you come, the second time you come was the schooly situation. Yes, was it? it was. Right. So, I've got this multi-million dollar thing now going, and my drug debt's probably about half a million right now of all the people who work for me. All right. Um, my right hand man, who was my top ecstasy salesperson, um, he's the one who Sammy the Bulls crew knocked his teeth out and stuff like that, and he got he got into smoking embalming fluid he was smoking crack smoking crystal meth and he started to plot against me and he started to poison some of my other bouncers minds against me and um seems to me sean like having a mate like him might be ideal for this situation i think that's See? why me the wife and kids are coming over really? yeah. so I've he, he, he comes solution. on his own yeah. in the beginning he's on his own so i pick him up from the greyhound bus station He's been smuggled, and um, first stop is this guy's house. Do you tell him at this point what's been going on? On the way to the house. Uh, this couldn't need sorted. Well, I say I want you to assess the situation because here's what's happened. I've got a lot of assess interest. the situation. <laughs> I've got I want to throw him over the fucking balcony. That's what I want to do. I've got a lot of internal strife right now. This guy, we'll call him Skinner. Um, he's, Skinner. I had, I had my own LSD chemist. He was manufacturing LSD, we had an apartment just for it. Thousands and thousands of hits laid out, gel tabs. So my LSD chemist got all this, this, this stuff in his house as well. And Skinner t tells my LSD chemist guy, we're gonna come over there, we wanna buy you know, so many tens of thousands of hits of LSD. But he brings over these South Side gangsters with guns, but my LSD chemist was suspicious from the get-go. So he had guys with AK, right? AKs and everything in the back of the house. Right. They come over to, to pretend to buy the acid. They were gonna rob the guy. <laughs> um, D, remember D, the big yeah. guy? He pulls out a shotgun, starts shooting. The guys with the AK start unloading. Bullets start going through all the neighbors' houses. And this is headline news. Right. So LSD guy is blaming Skinner. Skinner's blaming LSD guy. And this is one of the main problems I had, because this has just happened when Wildman got there as well. So we're like, we're gonna, we're just gonna go in and calmly ask Skinner for his side of the story, and that's what we did. And so, so what happened next? Then? I wanted to brain him. I really did. Why? Why is that, mate? Did you not trust him from day no, one? No, not day one. Yeah. The first time I met him, day one, just a story you could just tell. He was just fucking. He was off his head. When you've been off air enough times, you know when you're off your fucking head, you know what I mean? Right. And his stories and the way he was going on and on and on. I thought, I don't trust this bastard, I'll just have him. And I said, look, just let me have him. Just have him, throw him over the balcony or take him to the desert and have him. And he said, no, because he's making me the most money. I said, look, at the end of the day, I said, he might be making the most E money, but you got your acid guy. So if you've got two fucking people in your firm who are fucking making lots of money and they're at war, you're the one losing fucking out, you know what I mean? Yeah. There was more to it than that as well because he had a girlfriend, Marie, this Iranian American lady who was really tough and she was really supportive of, of everything I was doing and they had a baby together. Who's girlfriend? Skinner. Skinner. So if Skinner... Well, you should have thought about that, shouldn't you? That's, all, that's you and your sensible fucking side, that. Mm. Ultimately, Skinner's, what he did later on, took the whole organisation down. Wildman was right, but I thought if we escalated things to that level of violence against people who were working for me, the police would get involved and it would just... Things so you're trying to play down. things cool, calm yeah, them down. Yeah, I'm the negotiator, the diplomat. No, you, that's why you two, like me and Lawrence, that's why you two work well together. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You're the sensible You're one. the diplomat. Uh, He's like, take, let's exactly. take him out to the desert. I'm like, we're not, not, we're, not, we're not going to the murder level. Like. So, <laughs> so you talked him out of that and that yeah. never happened at the time. What happened next then? Well, he put the fear of God in him because as soon as... Skinner answers the door, he sees me, he's like big brother and he's hugging me and everything, smiling. And as soon as he sees him, his face just Did he know who he was? That was the story. Oh, he heard told. the stories. If yeah. you just sat and listened to him for five minutes, Brian, you'd have thought, ah, there's something wrong about this. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, just it, a story. Wild Man's presence did put him in check for a little bit. Yeah. But it didn't last. 